My brother almost died 14 times. Before I get into the details of exactly how that happened, let me take a moment to explain two things. First of all, the reason why I'm sharing this now is because well, I've been wanting to talk about it ever since I had the seizure in the metro like almost two months ago at this point. Uh, because he was epileptic and I had a seizure, it just kind of reminded me of that and everything. And I've learned so much from my brother, especially when I was young back when we were living together. And I felt like it was important to share his story and the, the lessons that he taught me. And I just haven't had time to record this video because of everything that's been happening in the last two months. It's been really intense and really difficult. And now that things are finally starting to get better, and I've actually run out of bad news to share in my videos, I actually have the time to finally share this story. So that's the reason why I'm sharing this now. And before, once again, I get into the details of how he almost died 14 times, I just kind of want to explain a little more about my brother and who he is. I did mention it in a couple of previous videos, but I never went into much detail. So my brother is autistic. He has the mental capacities of approximately a two-year-old. So very, very basic. And not that I want to go <clears throat> into this too much, but that is the reason I've always felt very protective of him and why I was so pissed at my mother back when we were young and she abandoned us. Because I'm like, all right, abandon me, that's fine. But you're going to abandon my autistic brother? Like, really? Anyway, so that, that's not the point of the video. I already talked about my mother. That I, I don't want to go into detail about that. But, you know, that's kind of the reason why I've always been very protective of my brother. Um, so, yeah, okay. That's kind of the... <clears throat> In fact, before I get into the, the real meat of this story, I just want to share another small story, small anecdote about my brother that did teach me a very important lesson. And back in the, in the day, I forget how old I was. I was maybe around 10, something like that. My brother was probably around like seven years old at the time. And we used to live in the country. <clears throat> and because of my brother's uh, you know, mental capacities and everything, there always needed to be someone around to watch him. And, you know, as a family, my mother, my father, my sister, and, my, and I would always kind of keep an eye on him. But, you know, you can't always keep an eye on someone 24-7. There will be a few moments where you kind of get distracted for a couple of minutes, and then you look back and you're like, crap, where did he go? So it happened multiple times when we were young that he did wander off. The good thing is we lived in the country, so it wasn't that dangerous. The only problem was because we lived in the country, <clears throat> there was the possibility that he could literally wander off into the woods, get completely lost and never find his way home and we could never find him. So we're always very careful of keeping an eye on him. But every once in a while, it would happen that we would kind of get away, if you will. And it happened one day. And usually when that happened, he'd kind of like wander off down the road or something like that. And we kind of knew the spots where to look whenever it happened. So we'd usually be able to find him relatively quickly. But this time we weren't able to find him. So, you know, we started to go further and, you know, try to figure out, all right, maybe he went to the road. If he did, which way did he go, left or right? And we're trying to figure everything out. And as we're heading towards the road, because we used to live very deep in the country. So there's like the main road, which is main road in brackets because it's a dirt road. <laughs> and then there would be the road that kind of leads into the forest and eventually leads to our house. So we're on that road going towards the main road when suddenly the school bus just pulls into our entrance. And we're like, OK, that's weird. Why? And then it stops. Nothing happens for a couple of seconds and the door opens and the driver comes out escorting her brother wearing a blanket around his shoulders because, as it turned out, back then my brother did not like wearing clothes so a lot of the times he would just remove his clothes and it happened that this time he removed his clothes, went wandering off and happened to stumble across a school bus and obviously the bus driver kind of knew him from around the area and everything at the time, like it's been a really long time, so I don't remember all the details, but it is possible that he kind of 
encountered him before, but this was definitely the first time that he was naked. So luckily he had a cover, he was able to cover him up. But the thing is like, I remember that moment of just standing there next to my parents and just taking in this whole situation of like, all right, here's my brother being escorted back by a school bus full of children by the bus driver completely naked. And of course, you know, as a kid, as a soon to be teenager, it was very embarrassing. But at the same time, it taught me how little those things matter. Like, who cares? All that matters is my brother is safe. And it's like, there's absolutely no reason to be embarrassed by anything. It's, it's just, for some reason, we care so much what other people think of us. And that was the perfect example of why it does not matter whatsoever. It was just a very funny, at the moment, embarrassing situation. Now that, I, now that I'm recounting it, I, I just find it hilarious. And even though it didn't necessarily sink in at that moment, that was one of the very important lessons that my brother taught me. Just how important it is to not care what other people think of you. Because yeah, okay, a lot of us go through the process of slowly caring less and less what other people think of us. But let's be honest, most of us will not completely strip naked and walk around and not care what anybody thinks of us. Even if we're not embarrassed of our body or anything like that, it's just not how our brain works. Yet my brother was completely oblivious to that. To him, he didn't care that there were kids. He didn't care that he was naked. He didn't care about anything. And I find that really admirable. And it was a very important lesson that I learned, even though it took me a while to kind of let it sink in. So anyway, just wanted to share that quick story. So back to the reason why my brother almost died 14 times is because on top of being autistic, he also has epilepsy. And back when he was young, well, back when we were young, uh, he had a special kind of epilepsy called staticus epilepticus, which basically means that when he would start having when he would start having seizures, it wouldn't stop by itself. So every single time he had a seizure, we would need to rush him to the hospital. And because we lived in the country, we we're so far away, there's no point in calling an ambulance. By the time they show up and find the place, like it, it just does not make sense. So every single time, and it often happened in the middle of the night, and back when I was young, for a couple of years, I shared a room with him. So a lot of the time, I was the one who got woken up by the sound of my brother having a seizure. And then I have to get up, rush to my parents' room, get him up. Then we, like, you know, my dad would grab my, my brother. My mother would, like, grab the keys. We'd all rush to the car, put him in, drive to the hospital, which is, like, 40, 45 minutes away. You know, go to the ER. The doctors take him, rush him in. And, you know, me and my sister wait in the waiting room while my parents are there with him and everything. And we're just waiting. And it's like, we know every single time it happens that this could literally be the last time we see our brother. Because, wow, I, I didn't think this would kind of hit me this hard. But yeah, we, we were aware that it could possibly be the last time because of the type of of epilepsy he had, like, if they're not able to stop the seizures in time, he could die. And he came close to dying 14 times. And <clears throat> aside from just being very traumatic when you're young, like, facing death that often, even if it's not your death, it's still very intense and it makes you realize how truly precious life is and to what extent people will go, especially parents, in order to protect their child. And, you know, my parents tried everything. They tried acupuncture, they tried pretty much every type of alternative medicine that you can imagine. We even went to Brazil twice to see a healer, and it actually ended up working. I'm, I still have mixed feelings regarding that because it was great going like on the trip, it was like discovering a new world, everything was amazing, it was a fantastic experience, but the center where the healer was, whenever I went there, I always like hated the energy. It always felt like very, 
dark, very unpleasant, very uncomfortable to me. I did not enjoy going there at all. But it did help my brother. So we went the first year, actually we went two years. So because, you know, obviously flying five people to Brazil is very expensive. Uh, so, you know, obviously it took us a year before we could have the, the money to go a second time. So anyway, we went twice and in the end, my brother still has epilepsy to this day, but he no longer has the status epilepticus. So the type of, of epilepsy that does not stop by itself. Now, whenever he has seizures, it stops by itself. So his life is no longer in danger as a result of that. And, you know, going through that experience of traveling halfway across the world to see a healer and seeing all these sick people getting like miraculously healed and seeing my brother getting healed and everything, like it really opened my mind up, even though I didn't like the energy. And I honestly don't know what was happening in the background of everything, but it's just, it made me realize like there is a lot of things in this world that we do not understand that we cannot explain. And whether it's just the belief, people believing so much that they're going to be healed by this healer that as a result of that, they heal themselves or because he was an actual healer and he could, I don't know, connect to some force or something out there. I don't really know. I was 10 and 11 when we went, so very far away in my memory. And, you know, when you're young, you don't really care about that. It's more like you want to travel and discover things and it's everything is cool and you want to have fun. Plus, I didn't like the energy, so I kind of avoided going to the center and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just it opened my mind up to the possibilities that were out there. And it, it just made me realize like, all right, you never know what is and isn't possible. And as a result of that, now going through what I'm going through, it's part of the reason why I'm able to believe with such intensity that I am going to be cured, even though the doctors and everyone tells me it's not possible. I'm choosing to believe that because I have seen things that cannot be scientifically and medically explained. I have also cured myself from my asthma just by deciding I don't need to take the pump anymore. I don't need to take the, the Ventolin. I'm, I'm going to be okay. My body can heal itself. And it did. And it's like that experience with my brother, that experience with asthma, as well as a few other experiences throughout my life is what helped create the belief that we as humans are so powerful and we can literally do anything as long as we believe it with every fiber of our being. And because of that, I'm so grateful to my brother, even though, you know, it sucks everything he had to go through. But at the same time, I'm also grateful because it taught me so much. And I'm also grateful in a way because even though, yes, he went through so many difficult things because of his condition and the fact that he couldn't really understand what's going on, he didn't really suffer as much as a normal person would have in his situation. In fact, I would say he's probably much happier than most people because he's kind of oblivious to most things. It's like money is not an issue. Work is not an issue. The stresses of everyday life that most people experience, he's never experienced that. So in a way, he's kind of lucky because he gets to experience life in a much simpler way that people don't get to. We like as humans to overcomplicate things and he never had to go through that. So even though I kind of wish he could have had a normal life, well, first of all, I'm just so grateful that I was able to learn so much from him. And I'm also grateful for him that he's able to live this simple, happy life. And yeah, I mean, there were difficult moments for him, for me and for our entire family. And I know it was difficult for everyone. And it's like, I understand that completely. And I don't resent anyone or any of the decisions they made. But it was very intense and everyone, I'm sure, took their own lesson from that experience. And yeah, so I just wanted to share that because it's been on my mind for a couple months at this point. And I found I thought it was really important to share that. And, you know, I love my brother. And even though I don't get to see him that often because, well, first of all, he lives far away. And at this point, 
it's like whenever I go visit him, first of all, I feel like I'm interrupting his life. And also, like, at this point, he doesn't really recognize me anymore. So it just feels like I'm, I'm disrupting him in his routine. So it's like, even though I miss him, I love him, and I enjoy seeing him, I kind of avoid doing it too often simply because I don't want to disrupt his life. So, yeah, that's, that's my brother. That's part of his story. And I just wanted to share that. So thank you for taking the time to watch and listen. And hopefully you can also learn something from everything he went through. So thank you and I'll talk to you tomorrow.